Look at the text on this image as I scroll down, it swaps out to something completely different. I scroll back up, the other one appears and we keep going to the third container or the third image and we get another bit of text and a call to action button. And then we go on and maybe you've got other stuff on your website, other services, other icons, other menus. They're all hidden away. But as you scroll back up, look, they all reappear and they swap back out. This is really easy to do. I'm not using any GSAP. I'm not using Webflow. This is all done with WordPress. You're going to be surprised at how easy and simple this is. And yes, it works absolutely fine on the mobile as well. There is a bit of JavaScript dumped into here, but don't worry. The code for this is in the link in the video description. Anyway, on the page, we have four containers. The bottom container is a dummy one, which is this blank one here which would have been other content on your website. We'll return to that. But let's focus on the very first container at the top. This is just 100% full width and 100 VH. I think this effect works really well when you do have full screen, like a photography website, showcasing some services or just something where you want the text to change when you come into view. Now, if any of you are thinking, oh, this is just Z indexing with a bit of sticky top and all of that, don't be fooled by that because it is not. There's a lot more going on. And even then, when I say there's a lot going on, it's quite simple. Anyway, look, let's just go to this container. Justified, aligned in the center. I don't really care about the gaps. You know, go to style. I've gone and added in my image. Center, center, scroll, no repeat cover. Seriously, there's not a lot you need to worry about this. Just go and build it out how you want. Put your background image. What is important, though? is when you go to the advanced tab, I've got a class in there called scroll hyphen section. There is no custom CSS, by the way, inside of this particular container, but you must ensure you call them scroll hyphen section. Now inside of here, we do have a heading and we have a HTML script as well. The HTML script will come on to towards the end, but the heading, now I did go and set the typography and you could have used the font clamp and I did set the color. But what I came to realize as I built this is that what you put here does not matter. So in effect, don't bother with any typography or text color because the script I'm going to give you, what it does is it creates like this separate div for HTML or it basically just creates the heading and it uses the wording you've popped here and your styling is all done within that script. So I would just recommend right now, just to let you know, when you pop in your heading text here, you always see it. Don't overly worry about the styling of it, okay? What you need to do is go and pop in your text, then go to the advanced tab, and you want to give this a class name of section hyphen heading. The container is scroll section, and the heading is section hyphen heading and then we go on to the second container and this is a copy of the first one the only thing it's missing is the html because you don't need to repeat it this container again has a different background image scroll section you go to the heading i've changed the wording from uh, whatever it was to you want to remember it you want to go to the style which you don't need to worry about so i'm just letting you know you can spend a lot of time here but it won't really matter advanced tab the class is section heading. And then we have the third one. Again, it's a copy of what we had above. Uh, again, the advanced tab, we have scroll section. Let me expand on that. You go to the heading and this now has got different wording and you now also have section heading. Again, the same class names repeating themselves. But the extra little thing we have here is a button. So I've added in a call to action button, okay? This works in a slightly different way to the headings, and I'll make that clear in a moment. Let's check your camera. You could have dropped in a link into there. Now, this one you do style. So if you decide that you don't want to follow what I've done and you're going to have heading, but you're not going to have a call to action button, maybe you're going to stick in an elemental form or maybe you're going to stick in another separate image within an image or a gallery or whatever you want. Look at what I've done to the JavaScript code, okay, and just and work it through. It's not that difficult because what I've done to this button, I have styled it, right? I've done all my styling here. And when I go to the advanced tab, I've called it section CTA. So in effect, you could drop in an elemental form if you want to and call it section CTA. You could drop in a gallery and call it section CTA. You could drop in a, a blog loop grid if you want and call it section CTA. You could do all of that. So there's a lot you can do, okay, because we are going to control it within the script and the code I'm about to show you. And then if I go to this blank dummy container I've just dropped in at the bottom, 
there's nothing fantastical going on here either. All I've done is given it a Z index of 99 just to make sure it goes over any other items that might have been on there. Now, none of these containers have a Z index except the one I did afterwards. Again, we control everything within the code. So let me now reveal the code. And you might look at this code and think, hang on, this looks a bit, you know, complicated. Yet the JavaScript does do stuff to it. But the bit at the top with the CSS, that should be really simple. Now, do you notice anything before I continue about my headings? Did you notice that as I went through them, they're not visible on screen? And that's because what the code does, it makes the headings you added invisible, right? They're not there. And what it does instead is it creates a fake one. So it creates a H2 called fixed heading and it gives it a class named locked fixed. And what happens is this or the JavaScript inside of this code will replace or populate the wording for these uh, dummy fake heading with the headings that you added. Try to get your head around this. Each of your containers have a heading. They're invisible. The fake heading. As you scroll, it will pick up what the heading wording was and it replaces the faked heading blankness with that wording. That probably made no sense, but just go with it, okay? Basically, this will populate with what your wording was. And, the re and that's why I earlier said, don't bother with styling it because I'm doing all of the styling here. You can just take what I've done if you wanna replicate what I've built out. So I've gone and stated my font family, Merryweather. That's my custom loaded font, okay? Because if you are now using this fake ID that we've just gone and built, you're gonna have to ensure it pulls through your custom loaded font and that's what it will do. I've gone and added in a font clamp. So this will now handle the desktop, the tablets, the mobile, the weights, the color, all of that. Okay, everything is done here. So that's why I'm saying don't worry about styling your headings. Further down is now where we have the styling for the section CTA. In this scenario, it was the button. And the, what, the only bit you really need to worry about is this one over here, which is bottom 35%. Because if that had been set to 0%, your button would be right at the bottom of the container. If you had it as 100%, it'd be right at the top, or kind of almost overflowing outwards at the top there. So what I wanted to do is 35% and that positioned it quite nicely just below the heading. And that is absolutely fine as a percentage for the mobile as well. I should very quickly point out something I forgot to mention. Every single one of those three containers, I have set the overflow to be hidden. You want to ensure that there is no overflow kicking in. You want to make sure that because the wording in a way, they disappear and appear. You won't see any overlap, but you want to ensure your overflow is hidden. Now, when you scroll down the code, you will notice this bit that's been commented out. This was the original code before I added in a button. So if you're not going to have any buttons like that, and you're just going to have the three headings, you could just use this code. But the extra code I've got here, this, this has been expanded on. This allows me now to bring forwards the button. And that's basically it. So you create your sections, you add in your headings, you add in your background images, make sure you use the right class names that I've said for these sections and the headings and for the CTA button or whatever you want to have in there. And then you drop in this bit of uh, CSS and scripting. Basically, there's loads of stuff going on there. Drop it in a HTML widget and this is what you're going to get. So you will scroll down to a point and you will argue, yeah, but look, I, that wording hasn't swapped. Well, at what point did you want it to swap? And I did try out a way whereby you got like, you always see it, half of it like clipped. And then you saw you want to remember it clipped. And it looked a bit strange because when you have one sentence, which is longer than another, it doesn't look very good. So I've just gone like that. So, so if you look at the wording, as soon as you get to somewhere like here, it swaps out. You scroll down and again, look, you go here, it swaps out and the button. That button is set to 35%. If it was set to 30%, it would probably be somewhere down here. Zero, it'd be further down. Now, I will just point out one little thing, okay? Once you scroll down, obviously, because the container below was set to be 99, it completely hides anything there, which is what you kind of want. But if you scroll up too quick, see that button? It eases out, but you will just see it going out. And so you could argue, well, you know, if you want to fine tune that, you can do. But if you go slowly, it's not a problem. So depending on how quick you scroll up and down, you're going to see it just overlap a little bit. But I think this is an amazing effect. 
that would work really well on a photography website or any other website where your images are really strong, but you just want to get over some impact headline statements. What do you think? I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon.